Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. My name's Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Tattoo Flash. Now, whether you haven't started tattooing yet, but maybe you wanna be a tattoo artist, I don't know, maybe you're not old enough yet, maybe you don't have the experience yet, or you're just not comfortable, uh, and, and don't, you know, you're not confident and don't have a strong portfolio yet. Whether you're an apprentice and you've just started tattooing or just started learning about the industry, or maybe you've already been at a shop for a couple of years and you're looking to improve your work, I think these five reasons to why you should paint Tattoo Flash will really help you. So for those of you who don't know what Tattoo Flash is, or maybe you're a little bit confused about the term, Tattoo Flash is basically the artwork, the individual designs that you see on the walls at Tattoo Studios. They're usually all over the walls and they basically are hand painted designs that are ready to be tattooed. I've got a couple of different examples of flash sheets that I've done here. So this is a traditional style Eagle and Roses flash sheet. And this is more of a near traditional style color flash sheet with all sorts of different designs on it. So this is what flash generally looks like, but it can come in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, and styles of art. Okay, reason number one is line work consistency. So one of the most important things when tattooing is getting nice, clean, and consistent line work. Even if you consider yourself a realism artist and you want to go more down that path, it's important that you can tattoo across varying different styles. And especially that especially applies to you if you're working in a street shop environment and you're going to get all different sorts of clients. Uh, it's also important if you need to do script or text. You need to know how to do you know, solid line work. Drawing Tattoo Flash can really help you learn this because you need to try and keep your lines nice and clean and nice and consistent. Now, a good way to do this is to learn how to line your artwork using a brush. It's a lot more challenging than using fine liners, and I'll have to admit, I don't always do it. It's pretty rare, actually, that I do it. However, if you want to improve your line work and consistency, a good way to do that is to get a fine lining brush, dip it in black ink, and use that to actually outline your tattoo flash. That way, if you put too much pressure and the line gets fatter, and if you you know, lift off the pressure a little bit, the line gets thinner. And you wanna try and keep a nice consistent line as you move through your lines. I think one of the biggest issues people have when they first start tattooing is understanding needle depth. So going in too deep can give you blowouts and you know, really uh, ruin a tattoo or not going in deep enough can cause the tattoo to completely fall out. The ink will just fall out and you're left with some you know, dotty line work, some not so good line work. So it's another great way to know your depth is to work with a brush when you line things. Uh, you know, like I said, by applying more pressure or not enough pressure will give you a thinner or fatter line. Well, this is sort of simulates the same way that you'd go in with a needle. If you go too deep, you get a blowout or a really, really fat line, fatter than you want it to be. And if you draw back on that needle too much and you don't put it in deep enough, your line work falls out and it's not as bold and thick as you'd like it to be. Okay, reason number two is color theory and color matching. So in terms of color theory, I think it's really important that you get this down pat when you're learning about tattooing or any style of art. You know, you wanna learn your color theory, what colors work well together, what colors complement each other, and maybe, you know, what kind of color palettes you like to work with in, within your style. Now, especially within tattooing and across the different styles, there's different color palettes that work well that make things look a certain way. So traditional designs will have a certain color palette associated with them. Japanese designs will have a certain color palette associated with them. Neo-traditional designs tend to have a lot more color range. You can sort of mix and match a lot of different colors. So knowing your color theory is really important and a great way to practice that is by painting. Another thing would be color matching. So here is one of my Liquitex inks. This is yellow orange azo. And here is a tattoo ink, which is El Dorado yellow from Solid Ink. And on camera, they don't look the same, but trust me, they look very, very similar and close in color. Once they're laid down, this one on paper and this one in skin, they look very, very similar. So in that way, you can actually learn how to have a consistent color base between your tattoo inks and the inks that you paint with so that your tattoos turn out really nice just like your paintings. There'd be nothing worse than drawing a beautiful piece of flash with all of the perfect matching color theory and then you go across to tattoo it and you don't have the right colors. Uh, you know, it's a good idea to match your colors up with what you paint with and what you tattoo with. This way you get really nice consistency. So reason number three would be application and method. So when you're doing colors and you're black shading, we always tend to start with black shading first and move into our colors afterwards. So we establish the values, so basically the lights and the darks of our image, 
This is to make sure you get your contrast right so that your images stand out. Maybe they have a three dimensional look if that's what you're going for, but you're basically working with your contrast, your light and dark values to make sure your images are bold and stand out. Afterwards, you layer your colors over the top of your watercolor black and this way you get nice smooth transitions from your darker shadows through to your vibrant colors. Now, generally speaking, this is exactly the same as how you would tattoo. You do your line work first, you fill in your black shading, and then you layer your color over the top, overlapping with your black shading to give you those nice consistent blends. And this way you make sure all of your values are right before applying your colors. Now, when you tattoo, you generally apply colors from darkest to lightest. It's not always the case, but you know, usually speaking, you'll start with your black shading, go through your range of sort of mid-tone colors from darkest to lightest, and you'll apply your white or your highlight colors at the very end. The reason for doing this is that you don't want to muddy up your colors. Sometimes you'll be wiping over the skin and you'll drag a bit of a darker color into your white and it can muddy it up a little bit if the skin is still open and it sort of enters that area of the tattoo. Now, I haven't personally seen the effects of this in a heel tattoo. However, it can make it really hard to get a nice photo of your tattoo if you've muddied up certain colors by wiping dark colors over the top of light colors and it may impact the tattoo upon healing. So when you're working with watercolors and painting your flash, it can be a great way to practice by staying mindful on how you would tattoo that design while painting it. Reason number four is to think about size and detail. So I think most people probably know that line work within tattoos, it spreads over time. Uh, you know, everything does. All of the ink will spread over time as the tattoo ages. Now that's always dependent on your skin, how well you look after the tattoo and how well it's covered. You know, sun exposure can affect the healing and the aging of a tattoo as well. But generally speaking, tattoos will all spread uh, over time. This makes it absolutely crucial to know how big you need to do a design when you're tattooing. If a design is too small, but it's packed with all these little intricate details and lines, it's going to be very, very difficult to make sure that ages well. It might look really good when you first do it, but over time, once all of those lines thicken up, they're going to blend into each other and look like an absolute mess. So it's really important to know what size you need to do a tattoo. In my opinion, a really great way to get to know this is to draw and paint tattoo flash. If you're having a really hard time getting into some of those detailed areas with a, you know, a regular number five or a number four brush, something like that, then it's, you know, you might be doing those areas a little bit too small. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are, but you certainly could be. Another one is doing a lot of small, super thin lines. So if you're used to doing a lot of really small, fine lines in your design, you need to remember that when you're gonna tattoo that design, you're gonna have to spend the time with a very small liner to get really clean, solid, smooth lines. And the smaller the liner is, in my experience, the harder it is to get a clean, solid line. Now, keeping all of this in mind when you're drawing and painting tattoo flash is a great way to practice because it'll ensure that you are conscious of how big a design needs to be to fit all of the details that you wanna fit in there. Like I said, if you're having trouble with the brush, it's probably too small. Now, the fifth and final reason you should be painting tattoo flash today, even if you're just starting out, is it's a great way to spread your personal style and a great way to spread your artwork. Now, I don't think any tattooist got into the industry so that they could copy Google images and, and print them onto skin. Maybe some people did, but I think most of them were dedicated artists, really wanted to do their own style, and really wanted to put their own spin uh, on the tattoos that they were doing and share their own personal vision with their clients. Now, in the beginning, especially when you're an apprentice, it can be really hard to get your name out there and get clients to come and see you. So a really good way to do this is to paint tattoo flash put it up online, share it in the shop you work at, and just display it for people to see. Be flashy, show it off. Uh, you know, it's a really good way for people to see your work and what you do best. Now, if you haven't started tattooing yet and you may be looking to get an apprenticeship, still drawing and painting tattoo flash is a really effective way to learn and practice. And it's also a really good way to show your potential, uh, you know, your potential mentor or your potential boss that you're interested in tattoo culture and the way that tattoos are supposed to be done. And it's a really good way to show your range of skills as well, that you can draw Japanese, you can draw traditional, you can draw neo-traditional. Now you might not specialize in all of them, but it's good to be able to draw and understand the, the different elements that make up these styles 
and show a good understanding of these designs. Now that was it for five reasons why you guys should be painting and drawing Tattoo Flash if you want to become a better tattoo artist or if you want to become a tattoo artist. Now you'll have to let me know what you thought of today's video in the comments down below. And while you're down there, leave me a comment letting me know what you guys would like to see in future videos and what topics you'd like me to cover. I really value your feedback. That having been said, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.